Hi everyone, today we're going to go over the Miura Guitars USA M2 Compressor Limiter Pedal. Hi, this is Rick Fairbrach here. We're going to go over the M2 pedal uh, compressor by Miura Guitars. Uh, we're going to look under the hood a little bit and maybe look on the computer and see what it does. So let's get that started right now. But first, a quick doggy check. Okay, let's take a look at the pedal really quickly. The threshold knob sets when the compressor actually engages. The ratio knob uh, probably starts at 1 to 1 to 10 to 1. And what that means is if you play a note, let's say at 5 to 1, and it's 5 dB above the threshold level, well, it's only going to be 1 dB louder at that point. The attack knob is when the compressor actually begins. It begins right at the beginning of the note, or does it let the transient through a little bit uh, so they have a little extra punch? So um, it just depends on what you want to do with this. So sometimes uh, if you want a more dramatic effect, you have the attack very short and you almost get a little distortion coming in. And if not, more natural sound, probably around 12 o'clock. The level is how loud, um, you know, the output is when you have the actual compressor on. So this can be also used as a boost, of course. You could, you know, be a little louder when you want the compressor on to cut through, uh, let's say, during a solo. Um, and that's basically the pedal. The input is over here on the right. The output is on the left, and there's a power on that side. And we'll actually go over um, some other tricks and stuff. I'm going to open it up in a little bit so you can see under the hood. There's another little threshold uh, set screw inside, and I'll show you how to use that as well. Okay, let's just hear the pedal a little bit before we do anything else. All right. a more dramatic one. Tack all the way down, ratio all the way up, threshold sort of up. So it's grabbing the notes a lot. And if I back off the attack and the ratio, a little more of a natural kind of sound. A little more dynamics coming through. Okay, let's open up the hood and uh, see what it looks like inside. Okay, as you can see, this is a really nice pedal, really good uh, potentiometers, really good PC board. This ground wire is, is very interesting. It's a solid uh, piece of copper that's connecting everything together. Um, yeah, it's a great unit. And again, this only works on 9-volt um, power. You can't put a battery in here. Uh, but it does um, really sound great. It's basically noise-free. I didn't hear any hiss at all. So a really nice unit. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, weigh this thing and see what it weighs. Okay, let's weigh this puppy. Um, the M2 comes in at 13.1 ounces. Here is a digital delay pedal by Boss, a DD7. Comes in at 14.2, which is a little heavier. And uh, an MXR Bass Octave Deluxe is the lightest in the category, 7.6. So if you're worried about, uh, concerned about weight because you travel a lot, this is actually a pretty light pedal for its size. Uh, the pots are very smooth, by the way, extremely smooth. Really good components in this thing. And um, it's just a really nice pedal. Comes with uh, some pads on the back, 
so you don't scratch anything. And you can actually adjust the threshold with a little, uh, there's a little hole in there that you can do it with as well. I would probably take the cover off because um, you can get at it a little bit easier. Alrighty, let's see what this thing looks like on the computer. Okay, basically what I did is I recorded uh, the dry signal of the bass and then also looped it back around through a radial duplex uh, passive DI, JDI, uh, back to the M2 compressor. So simultaneously recorded them together. And as you can see, the M2 is clamping down on the transients. And the M2 is here in, on the bottom in the orange. And what that's doing is when you normalize the tracks, in other words, I normalize it so that the, the number, the highest peak is the highest peak on both. It's on 100 or whatever you want to call it, zero. Um, it's, you can see that it's louder than the M2. And the only reason it's louder is because those higher peaks, like this one right here, have been clamped down which allows the whole track to be able to be turned up louder. Um, it's letting the, the lighter notes be heard easier. If you listen to just a dry signal really quick, uh, let's do that first, okay. And here is the M2 now. So, you know, the M2 sounds louder, even though it's um, the peak is the same on both of the tracks. If you listen with the drums, you can hear it even better. Uh, here it is with the drums with um, just a dry track. And I'll go to another section. I'll keep it there. Actually. Now, if you hear it with the M2, it'll seem louder to you. And especially with the finger style thing, it really makes a big difference. Uh, here's the dry. And here it is with the M2. You know, you can hear even the sound is different because, uh, you know, all the frequencies are being kind of pulled up, uh, you know, the lighter things or the subtle things are being brought up so you can hear them better. Um, so that's how that works. And, you know, that's, that's why you, a compressor is really good, especially live, because if your amp doesn't have enough power to put out all the dynamics and the transits that you want, this clamps it down so that you can hit it kind of hard and it, it doesn't freak out the amp and, and make it distort. And at the same time, you can hear the lighter notes better. The M2 has uh, some really great specifications. The input impedance is 1 million ohms. So if you have an old jazz bass or if you even have um, like a passive upright bass pickup, it's going to work great. Any active bass pickup is going to work fine as well. The M2 needs at least 230 milliamps of power to run properly. So make sure your power supply uh, delivers at least 230 milliamps. But of course, you can go a lot higher than that and you won't damage the pedal. Attack time is variable up to 100 milliseconds and the release time is fixed at 22 milliseconds. Hey, I hope you had some fun. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. I hope you learned something as well. Many thanks to Richard Ruse of Trickfish Amplifiers and also Hiro Midora for the M2 compressor pedal. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.